OK, let's try to keep this video short and sweet. This is a QCK Plus that is pretty dirty and pretty well worn. Um, this just two mice, one has PTFE feet, uh, one has ceramic feet. That's why I have two mice here. Um, and just to kind of you know show high friction mouse pad because one, it's a QCK Plus, and uh, two, it's dirty and well worn. If you have ever had like two of the same mouse pad and one is old and dirty and one is new, then uh, you'll know that the new one will always be faster than the old and dirty one. Uh, and if you clean a mouse pad, it doesn't bring it back up to as fast as a brand new one either. So, um, so it is kind of a combination of both, you know, worn and dirty. This applies to hard pads as well, uh, especially hard pads. <laughs> Unless we're talking about glass pads, I haven't actually used glass pads. I don't know how, where those stand on, in terms of like wearing out, but uh, like plastic hard pads, they are much easier to clean but the problem is they wear out much easier as well. And the feel of a worn out hard pad is very different from the feel of a new hard pad. So it's even more drastic there. But this is a slow mouse pad because it's a slow mouse pad and because it's dirty. That's the point I'm trying to illustrate here. Very slow, whatever, say lovey. Uh, this is a Teflon baking sheet uh, that I've been using for months now. Uh, it's pretty easy to clean. Um, just because it's literally just a tough on baking sheet. Um, but, uh, but it's faster than a QCK plus by like a huge margin. Um, especially with like the ceramic feet, you can see it like really glides with the ceramic feet. I'm not trying to tell you to buy this. I'm just, you know, trying to show that this exists for a comparison point. You know, uh, the reason I don't suggest you buy this is because I've actually had quite a bit of tracking issues on this. Um, it's not enough for me to switch off of it. But the reason I'm using this is because it is fast enough and easy to replace. And why that's relevant is because uh, I like hard pads. I like the speed of hard pads. Um, but the problem is, like I said, hard pads wear out super fast to the point to where I can't justify spending a lot of money replacing it every single time. And it's also kind of wasteful with the amount of material that goes into the typical hard pad. Uh, the Glorious Helios, which they've renamed to the Glorious Air, and theoretically it's slightly different, is kind of the epitome of this example where, like, once you wear it out, there's nothing else you could really use it for because it the back just starts to get all gunked up and it kind of gets disgusting, so you kind of just have to throw it away. Um, but uh, let me bring up some other out mouse pads here because, you know, you've, you've seen this, you've seen kind of how the mice glide around on it. Let me get the glorious ice and show you what that looks like. So this is what I would consider like a top tier mouse pad. I really like this. It's really easy to clean, but the big issue I have with it and the reason I'm not using it right now is it's super easy to damage. Like there's there's a small mark. I don't know if you can see right here. There's a small white spot from uh, I dropped something on the mouse pad. Uh, and it's that simple. You drop something on the mouse pad and it damages it, which is not great in terms of durability. Um, and in general, what we're seeing is um, a trend in the market towards more expensive mouse pads that aren't necessarily going to last too longer. They're just focused on high performance. And I think this is a bit of a problem because uh, it's extremely wasteful. Like if you if you buy this as a high performance mouse mat and then it lasts you six months and then you have to buy a new one, um, this material is uh, quite a bit of non-recyclable material. Things like this um, once they wear out and you decide to spend money to replace them, it starts to add up uh, quite a bit, uh, especially when you go to things like the uh, Mad Cat's Glide 38 uh, and also the ROG Scabbard. Let me get the scabbard here. So this is ROG Scabbard. Uh, it's very dirty. Um, even though it's dirty, it's actually still pretty fast, which is kind of nice. Uh, but the problem is, like, I've tried to wash this and... Uh, in the process of washing this, I damaged it because I really like this mouse pad. I want to keep it around, but the more I washed it, the more damaged it became, which kind of meant that at some point, this really massive mouse pad, because you're only seeing like a corner of this, it's actually like a 36 inch uh, mouse pad. Um, at some point, I'm just gonna have to throw it out because it's just, it's kind of gross and I can't keep it around forever, but that's like a lot of material and it's kind of expensive. Not only is it, I don't want to spend the money to continuously replace this as it gets dirty, but also, it's extremely wasteful to buy a new one and then throw it out and then buy a new one and throw it out. 
Um, like what makes more sense is you know maybe giving it to somebody else to use, but still it's kind of gross when you get like dead sin cells accumulated inside of a mouse pad, and you can't really clean it off without damaging it more and more. So like once again calling back to the market is trending towards more expensive mouse pads that aren't necessarily more durable. They're just focused on performance, and they might claim, oh yeah, we're super durable and super easy to clean, but at the end of the day, uh, unless presumably it's a glass mouse pad they're not really living up to that. Uh, and I think this is harmful to customers and also the environment. Whenever you buy a mouse pad and like high performance and like the high performance-ness of it, um, you'll want to go back to that, which means you'll, you'll, you'll be enticed to spend more money to go back to the new feeling once it wears down. Um, so this kind of starts a cycle of buying new mouse pads. I know some people are, some professionals, um, that use the the Shinenkai, I believe it is, uh, and they just like buy a new one every couple of months because it wears out so fast. So back again to our little Teflon baking sheet. Um, I got three of these in a roll for ten dollars, uh, and I am using this because it's something that is high enough performance um, that I, I actually want to replace this today. So I'm going to do this in this video to see how much difference it makes to glide, um, but. I use this because it's easy for me to buy and then when it wears out or gets dirty, I can actually throw it out because it's so little material. I literally just taped it to my desk and tried to get it as flat as possible. And um, it served me really well. But I think this is something like if we saw mouse map manufacturers start making things like this, like a super thin layer that you just like tape to your desk and then you go to, go to the races, like, you know, not spending a lot of money and also getting decent performance and uh, not wasting a lot of m money or resources when you have to replace it. Like that would be the ideal world in my in my opinion. Like I, I don't know that this is the answer or the solution to the bigger problem, but um, it feels like using less material at a lower cost with decent performance um, kind of makes it easier to uh, for people to swallow the replacement thing because you're not wasting as much when you replace it uh, and it allows you to replace it because of the cost being much more uh, affordable. So that's what I want to do today. Uh, let's get this replaced and see how much difference a new one makes. And you're kind of, you know, I mean, I'm not scientifically testing any friction coefficients here. So you're just kind of have to go by what I'm saying, I guess. So yeah, let's go ahead and swap this out and see what happens. Okay, so now that I have taped this down and there are minimal wrinkles in it, uh, let's do the test again. So the problem with PTFE feet on this mouse pad is your directional glide is actually pretty strong. So I'm feeling a lot more friction horizontally than vertically, um, but that is just for PTFE feet. Ceramic feet, if you are a ceramic feet user, this is insane and it's really cheap. So. I, all in all, I'd really like to see more things like this. So like I've said many times in this video, I don't recommend this. For PTFE feet, the glide is inconsistent. With ceramic feet, it's amazing, but the problem is, in all cases, I have actually ran into issues with, you know, spin outs and skipping, uh, regardless of what mouse I was using. So this isn't really a good mouse pad. It is a cheap mouse pad. And if you want something that'll like, you have ceramic feet and you want something that you could replace with some frequency that isn't expensive and uh, doesn't like produce a whole bunch of material waste, uh, it might be worth giving this a shot. And maybe you could live with the occasional spin outs um, or maybe your mouse has LOD adjustment that'll you know let you get, uh, get past it and not really run into any issues at all. But the point is, this is kind of a weird solution, but I think it solves a bigger problem in the market. That is, I don't want to spend $40 or more um, just to get a new mouse pad because my old mouse pad has worn out or gotten dirty to the point to where uh, I've cleaned it several times and it's just kind of destroyed at this point. And, and I think we need more things like this. Now, 
Before we go, I want to show one more product, and that is the CS Hide uh, Engine C4. This is the CS Hide Engine C4. It is extremely uncommon from what I've heard. Like, I've, I've never met anybody that has ever used this, let alone few people that have even heard of it. Uh, what it is, is basically some sort of Teflon-ish sheet uh, with a rubber back. This is not an adhesive back. This is a rubber back. Very different from what Glorious does with the Helios because if this gets dirty, since it's not adhesive, you can actually clean it. Um, mine is dirty right now because I haven't cleaned it in a while. It's been in storage, but that's besides the point. Uh, this mouse mat is weird. Um, the glide for ceramic feet isn't that great. PTFE feet, it's actually pretty good, but all in all, this wore down super fast. But what I'd like to see is um, less specialized versions of this. So if we could get something like this, that is a weave-based mat with some sort of like Teflon, like what we had basically under here. If we had this, but with a more consistent weave and a rubber back, I think that would, if, if we could get something like that for cheap and get like three for $15 or something, then we end up in a world where we can replace our mouse mats. It's not expensive. And it's also, you know, way less material we're throwing out because even though this is a decently sized sheet um, and it's not really reusable in any way, shape or form, uh, at least you're not throwing out a huge hunk of rubber, you know, um, with that you can't, you, know, you have to like rip off of something else in order to recycle or whatever. So um, this, I don't actually recommend this mouse mat. It's pretty weird. Uh, if you want a weird mouse mat, it's something might be worth looking at. But from a performance perspective, I actually don't particularly like this. Um, but I just wanted to point out there because I think this is basically the direction that we should be going, except the fact that this is not super cheap. So something kind of like this idea where it's like a thin, flat sheet, uh, except use uh, some sort of Teflon baking sheet and then improve the weave so that it's more consistent for mousing. Like, it's not that hard. And I think it'll save manufacturers on cost because this is $10 for three. It's the perfect size for a mouse mat. Uh, and if all they need to do is just like improve the weave a little bit and then, you know, slap some rubber on the back and not even like thick rubber, just like some very thin rubber film like this, then it's less material cost for the manufacturer, which means that hopefully it makes it to the consumers with a little bit lower cost as well. So a little bit of a rambly video, but fundamentally my problem with the current mouse pad market is that when mouse pads will slow down over time, and when they do, it's kind of wasteful to replace them, you know, with the way that they're currently designed and manufactured and sold. Maybe we could move to something that is less material waste and lower cost to account for the fact that this is just kind of the way using a mouse pad works. It wears down and it doesn't keep its original speed. And if you want to go back to that, that high speed, like when I switched this out, I was shocked how much the... Uh, the ceramic feet, like how fast they were on the new one versus the old one that I had. But, you know, like I could afford to do that with this because it's 10 bucks for three. That's like, that lasts me like, you know, I, I get one and a half packs a year and then that lasts me perfectly fine throughout the entire year. So I don't know. I don't have the answers. I just have questions. And I think I there's a bit of a problem here that we hopefully can see addressed, but I, I sincerely doubt we'll see it addressed in any reasonable amount of time. That's for sure. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.